Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equinox. In the last episode, just as we had finished off the day, we actually unlocked two brand new types of animals for our worlds. Of course, we have these adorable turtles wandering around the tropics now. Tank the turtle, in fact. He looks like he's doing pretty good here, too. We haven't read up on the turtles yet, so we are missing some of its like species. In fact, right over here in particular seems to be the worst place for Tank. That's kind of unfortunate, too. Oh my gosh! Did you just lay a little turtle egg? Oh, Chip the turtle! They have names before they even hatch? I didn't even realize that. Well, we will have to make sure that we have the right species over there to make the baby happy. Yeah, this seems to be a better environment for them. So, let's read up about the turtles real quick. The turtle is a small reptile which eats plants and fruit. It can live both on land and in the water, but requires damp areas. When scared, it can hide in its shell to protect itself from predators, and it lays eggs to reproduce. Alright, and what does it need to make it happy? It needs water plants, grasses, and flowers. So, does the flowery grass only count as a type of grass? Or would this actually count as a type of flower too? I wonder if maybe there's a location where it's too far away from a water plants, or if it's the other way around. I guess for now we'll make sure that we place some more seaweed down here, because it does look like it's a little bit bare. Some kelp perhaps? Because I guess that would make a pretty good thing for it to eat. We'll just have to make sure that we place some stones inside as well, because I think that's probably why our kelp is dying off right here. Was it just the small stones that it needed? Oh well, yeah, now it is much, much happier. All of our tropical seaweed is thriving pretty well right around all of our fish. So maybe now it can start spreading closer to the turtles. So was that enough to help any? Oh, there's the baby turtle. Chip is running after his father. Or I guess it would be his mother, technically. So they still don't seem to have one of their like species. I wonder if it is the flowers after all? This should definitely count as grass, but I'm going to assume that those tiny little buds just turn enough. So what kind of flowers would actually grow in the tropics? If we change this over to lives inside the tropical biome, let's see if there's any type of flower that jumps out at us. Oh well, a tropical flower. That might be a good place for us to start. We just need some lizards nearby. Wait a second, we have so many lizards over here. This flowery grass seems to be younger than the other, so we'll use you to evolve our next species. Now while that's hard at work, let's go over to our lake, because this is where the pike should be. And assuming they've all survived... Oh my goodness, that's our pike, isn't it? It did say that the pike was going to be massive. Yeah, you are definitely the biggest fish in the pond right now. It's no wonder that they're munching on all of our trout. Do you actually have a trout in your mouth? No, maybe those are just like whiskers or something? The younger ones don't seem to have them, so that's why I thought they had a trout in their mouth. But let's go ahead and read about them too, even though they seem to be doing just fine. The pike is a vicious, flesh-eating fish. The pike will chase any other fish and likes to live in the river biome. Alright, so anything special for you? No, nope, but it looks like it just needs small fish for it to eat. It likes a riverbed and the tropical biome too. So I guess if we wanted to, we could always place one of them over here by the tropics too. Now there's our very first tropical flower. Ooh, that is going to be gorgeous. A small colorful flower that grows in tropical regions. So it's a natural colors are these beautiful like teal shades and also this pink one too. I wonder what color this one is going to be. I think I see some blue in there, so it's going to fit in perfect with our mushrooms and our flowery grass. It doesn't seem to need anything to keep it happy either, so let's just go ahead and pop it right down next to the water side. Feeling better now, Chip? No, it's like species is still only at two out of three. Oh, that's strange. Yeah, two out of three. So I wonder if it is actually the water plants? Maybe the kelp isn't good enough. Let's try spreading some of this tropical seaweed a bit closer too, I guess. It looks like they're going to be very, very happy over here as well. And we probably want more tropical plants in our tropics anyways. It'll make it easier for us to spread more animals out this far. 
but what else could we place on top? I guess we could do the water lilies, but I do vaguely remember that some of the fish didn't like them, so we would have to be careful with where we place them. We could unlock coral, too. That comes from the tropical seaweed. We need a nearby species of cyan clownfish, some shells nearby, and a tropical biome, of course. Oh, maybe it's about time that we change up your colors, then. If we can find a nice young clownfish to use. Let's see if we can change you over to the cyan color. Oh, did you see all the colors we could choose from? A literal rainbow of fish colors. That's pretty cool, but cyan is going to have to do for now. I would love to make a little coral reef. I wonder if we could get like all different types of coral colors? Or if it's just going to mainly be one type? I guess it depends if we put down more groups for more variety. And even though the tropical flower didn't seem to do very much, I'm going to go ahead and place a few more of them over on the outskirts. Just for a little bit more diversity. Maybe way up here on the hills? Suitable biome definitely goes down the closer we get to the woodlands, so it's not going to be able to get too close to our guinea pigs. Gosh, you have traveled awfully far. The pirates are on the move again. I wonder if they're getting bored of their current landscape. Yeah, Macho the guinea pig pirate. It seems like they're looking for a new land to conquer. Maybe they've had enough of all these squirrels in the trees. I suppose we could always bring them up to the mountains instead. We actually have a group of guinea pigs living quite peacefully in the meadows right now. Oh, poor Gus. Just about to pass away. Yeah, looks like some of their like species are gone again. I wonder if that might be the herbs. Yeah, we have plenty of flowers over here, but something tells me the herbs are an issue. Let's change this over to the forest biome, and we'll drop a couple of these little rosemary plants right in between all of these trees and these flowers. Much better now, right? Yeah, there we go, 100% environment again. So yeah, I wonder if maybe we could get Macho over here instead? That way our eagles will have a little bit more to eat too. And speaking of which... Oh, this makes me so sad. This nest is still perfectly built, and these eggs are still sitting inside. But since we don't have a mother eagle to incubate them, I guess they're never going to hatch. I wonder if we placed another group of eagles down over here, if they would fly over to this nest, or if they would build their own. I want to make sure that the eagles are definitely going to be happy though, and I want to make sure that they'll be able to reach our little bunnies over here. That should then unlock us the desert rock. So let's see exactly what the eagles needed again. I know they were a little bit pickier than most, yet yeah, they need those spruce trees in their biome, so it could just be that the spruce trees were too far away to keep them happy. These spruce trees look like they're doing pretty good. So if we can find them in this list... Wait a second, what is this thing? This beautiful spiral tree evolves from the red tree? It's over in our lush biome. We need some reptiles to evolve that, and an area below 20 meters? Okay, first let's go ahead and place these spruce trees over here. Oh, it has some dislike species nearby. I wonder if that's why we're going to grow them this close? Well, let's just place a couple of little saplings down, and hopefully they'll find a way to survive and thrive here. Life usually finds a way, even in Equilinox. Then we can head back to the lush biome while all of those are growing. And we can see if we can start evolving some spiral trees down here. This is actually where we set up all of our little lizards anyways, so we should have a pretty good shot. Is this our very last red tree? Oh, what's wrong with you? Yeah, you were the one who didn't like mushrooms? That must mean that some of our little red mushrooms have spread too close to you. The tall mushrooms, that's right. Oh, it looks like it even passed away before we could even click on it again. Ooh, but a little red tree has grown in its place. Yeah, you're probably not going to last very long either. And you're not quite low enough to give us a spiral tree. Unfortunately, we have tons and tons of mushrooms around here too. I guess if we wanted to do this properly, we would probably have to pluck some of these mushrooms out of the ground. So let's go ahead and remove many and just get rid of them all in the circle right here. I don't want to disturb too many of the other species, of course. 
Our pink trees probably enjoy them. And I'm sure that the lizards probably did, Jerome. But this is all for good cause. Soon you guys will have some brand new trees to take care of. Actually, it looks like they're much better suited to this area down here. We'll place one of the red trees over there. And it looks like we can place one over here too. Yeah, 100% environment in this tiny area on the cusp. I'm not sure how long that's going to last when the mushrooms start to spread again. But for now, it looks like it's doing just fine. Let's go ahead and place another one right between all these rocks, just in case that this is too far away. No, it looks like it's good. Okay, we'll choose the one that's a bit closer, though. And I guess pretty soon we'll have some spiral trees to add a little flair to our lush biome. Honestly, we haven't focused on this area too much. It's kind of a hodgepodge little mess right now. The peacocks are probably not very impressed. We do know they love to keep it fancy. Now, do we have any little cyan clownfish in the water? Ooh, tons of them. Actually, it looks like you might be the only orange clownfish left. Now, there's another one over here. These are gorgeous, though. It's too bad that we can't get a little bit closer to truly appreciate them in their element. But I'll bet they'll look really nice with the coral. Ooh, and we should probably make sure that we start evolving the angelfish, Jerome. Yeah, I think we changed the color in the last episode for this. Since we will have to place some more shells down here to properly evolve the coral, I have a feeling that our redfish are probably going to die off. So hopefully the angelfish will appreciate it there too. Now, how's our spruce forest looking? Pretty good. It's emerging directly into the desert over here, which is kind of bizarre to see. Chevy, Freddy fish, snowy. Well, there we go. Somebody's taken a little bit of inspiration from their environment. I guess they enjoy it then. Oh no, and another strange chicken. Ooh, a strange chicken of darkness. Has there been a change in the family? Lola Rose? Oh my gosh, that is an adorable name. Well, it looks like it's going to be some sort of brown chicken. That's a little bit more natural than what we've seen so far, but maybe it'll help them blend in with the scenery. There's Lola Rose. Oh my gosh, she is so cute. I'm not sure if we're going to selective breed her because I do like these purple colors a little bit better. Yeah, I kind of feel like this is just the regular brown color that you can get from any old chicken. It's still pretty cute though, and maybe we'll see it for a few more generations. Now it looks like our angelfish is almost ready too. Let's go ahead and speed that up for a moment, just so we can read about this one. A beautiful tropical fish. The angelfish is able to live in tropical biomes or even a mixture of riverbed and tropical, but it definitely requires some tropical seaweed in its habitat. Well, sounds like you're going to be right at home then. It likes tropical seaweed and stones. So you shouldn't have any problem living right over here. Oh no. Oh, where did I put it? Oh, that always tricks me. It's like a depth perception thing. I thought I was placing it right over here with the rest of the fish. But I think I may have doomed our poor little angelfish. It's so small too. And it is getting pretty dark, so I might just be missing it. Oh my gosh, though, that is such a bummer. We are actually going to have to go back in here and place another group of angelfish down. Yet yeah, they definitely need to be closer to the shore, because this is where all of our stones are. This is where all of our seaweed is. Oh, I am so sorry, my poor little angelfish. I hope we'll find your brother out here somewhere. In fact, is that you, little guy? Oh, you poor thing. Oh, there is no way we're going to be able to save it in time. Tropical seaweed, but that probably won't grow without the stones. Are you still hanging in there, buddy? Yeah, looks like he's doing okay. Oh, the suitable biome is terrible, but at least we do have all of its like species. So maybe this angelfish group will survive after all. We just need to make this biome stronger for it. Honestly, that's probably where the coral is going to come in. Right in the middle of this ocean here. I think that would look pretty nice. So a couple of little shells way down in the depths of the ocean ought to do the trick. Let's see if we can evolve this one right here. It doesn't have too much longer on its lifespan, but maybe if we're lucky this one will be quick. Oh my gosh. And look at all of the turtles we have skittering around the beaches now. Skylar, Rex. We have Gandalf. 
And there was one more over here too, right? Going straight into the water now. Chip, oh, I remember you. You are looking much bigger than the last time we saw you. You know, a lot of you have asked me to change the sizes of our animals. We always adjust the colors to make them look different, but we haven't really tried playing around with the sizes before. The only time we adjust those sliders is when we need to make them bigger to evolve a different species. So why don't we see if we can make our turtles absolutely massive? That should help us actually find these creatures too, when they're wandering around the sands. And it looks like our seaweed may have passed away after all. Well, very, very quickly, let's go ahead and adjust the size straight on this guy. We'll go up to about 20% and see if that makes his babies bigger. Now let's pick up where we left off. It only got about 39% of it done. Oh, and the shells aren't close enough here? I guess we'll have to choose this one then. You give us some good luck, little seaweed. And I think I did see in the notifications that our spiral tree has officially grown. This thing is actually pretty gorgeous. Even right now, just as these two twisted saplings. So, can we read about this? Just to make sure that it doesn't need anything special? The spiral tree is an interesting looking tree with twisted branches. It grows in the lush biome and prefers growing near to water, alongside bamboo. Tropical birds enjoy nesting in the spiral tree. Alright, so I guess we could probably bring the toucans over here, and they would be very, very happy with these trees as a home. It likes bamboo, so it seems like it's in the right place. And while we don't have any water over here, that wasn't too much of an issue for the bamboo either. So let's go ahead and place you right over here. Right between all of our biggest bunches of bamboo. Look at this thing growing now. Oh, that is so cool. It's like the two saplings have kind of grown up together, merging into one giant tree. Ah, and there's our coral! Yes, excellent! Brightly colored organisms that live in the water. They spread the tropical biome underwater, but are unable to live in the riverbeds, so don't go putting them together with a regular riverbed seaweed. They are also technically not plants, with each coral being made up of thousands of tiny animals called polyps? Oh, interesting. I knew that coral was like a living organism, but I didn't know what it was called. So what can we do to make sure that our coral reef really takes off here? We just need shells nearby, okay. Well, you should enjoy it here then, but let's make very, very sure that we place you in the right place. We'll pop you right over here, so you're a little bit closer to the rest of our fish. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty healthy here. So yeah, I would like to see if we can change the colors of the coral, maybe? This beautiful pink color is really nice. Oh, but look at all the different colors we could have. We're gonna have to make sure that we place down plenty of different families here. So maybe we could have a rainbow growing all at once. So we'll go ahead and turn off the selective breeding on you. And we'll place another bunch of coral down right over here, I guess. Pretty close to our fish yet again. And then maybe one more way over here. Though that is very close to our kelp. So I wonder if that's why it was unhappy. Ooh, a new flower? We've been getting pretty lucky with the random mutations today. The tropical flower has that strange green color. Okay. Well, again, I guess it's going to blend in pretty well with the other plants in the tropics. It's different, but it's still not really going to stand out. Alright, though, before we forget, let's go back to our different little coral families. I think this one over here is one of the new ones we placed down. Or maybe this one a bit closer to the fish. Yeah, let's change the color on you. If we change you to neon blue, perhaps, that would be pretty gorgeous. It would help the fish hide too, I'm sure, since all of them have this beautiful blue color. And then as for you over here, let's change you to something different. We could do purple, maybe. Ruby red would be pretty gorgeous as well. We have nearly 2 million points, so I think we could definitely afford that. Actually, is there anything else that we can evolve it to? No, the coral is the end of that evolution tree. Though I did notice that we have plenty more flowers that we could grow out of these things. The bromeliad? Is that what that was called? Oh, and here's our cute little green flower. Actually, I kind of like that. It's subtle, but it really fits this place. He had that bromeliad and the heel bloom. The heel bloom. 
Ooh, I wonder if that's going to be good for our little lizard stew. And these poor flowers keep passing away before I can even look at them. Oh no, I wonder if that means we lost that special color. Unless maybe this one up here has it. There we go, it looks like it still survived after all. So the heel bloom. We just need to give them a color trait of purple. Yeah, I'm awfully curious to see what that's going to be about. So let's go ahead and selective breed these to the purple color. There we go. I guess pretty soon you guys might have some new healing plants to take care of. Now I don't want to end this episode without placing our eagles back into the world. So let's make sure that all of our bunnies are doing okay. It looks like they are. We have brand new little baby bunnies down here. Their environment is high, but it looks like their health might be a little bit low. Maybe it'd be a good idea for us to place a few more of the cactus plants in here then, just to make sure that they're not going to disappear on us. I wonder if we should consider maybe increasing the size of them too, just so they would stand a better chance against our eagles. We could choose Linus or Cindy down here. Let's go ahead and choose Cindy. We'll selective breed you and bring the size up by about 20% again. Then you should make a really good meal for our eagles. Oh, you know, I almost forgot. We were going to go ahead and take our little guinea pig pirates to conquer this brand new land. So while I'm sure Macho has probably passed away by now, let's see if we can find one of his babies. Maybe Charles right here? He seems like a pretty wiry sort. We'll go ahead and transplant you and bring you all the way up to the very top of the mountain. Right next to our other group of guinea pigs, I guess. Right here should be okay. It looks like there's plenty of rosemary and there's plenty of flowers as well. So you should be pretty happy. Ooh, he's charging off for those blueberry bushes. You know, that's something that our pirates didn't actually have over here. Yeah, so you're going to enjoy this land, aren't you? Maybe he'll find he has a taste for the blueberries instead of the flowers. Well, with the guinea pigs in place and the bunnies too, as soon as the game saves, let's see if we can place down our eagles next. The nest is still there, right? With some spruce trees to shelter it. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what our eagles are going to decide to do. So as long as the environment is good, and it seems to be, let's place them somewhere on the crust here, right on the side of the mountain, so they have a pretty good chance of finding these bunnies as a snack. Now all we need is for this eagle to grow fast enough that it'll actually be able to take to the skies before it starves. That was our main issue before. These poor little eagles just couldn't catch their own food. If it's still too tough for them, I suppose what we could do is place a different group of predator down here instead. That way, when something like the wolf kills a different meal. Wait a second. Oh no. Did my beloved bluebell pack pass away too? Oh no, our mountains are crumbling. Oh, it must be because they hunted away all of the goats and the sheep. Oh my gosh, my heart, that is so sad. We had to just finished coloring them too. Well, that doesn't mean we can't start over. We can place some more sheep up here, some more goats. I wonder if maybe they didn't have enough food to eat? I mean, if the prey is struggling, then you know that the predators are going to struggle as well. Well, we'll place two groups of goats over here, side by side. Maybe another group way back here, too. Though it looks like they are missing some of their, like, species here. I guess over here we'll have to do instead. Oh, and we already completed the Desert Eagle task? Oh my gosh, they only needed to catch one of the Desert Hares? Well, I guess that means our eagle is doing just fine, then. There you are. Oh, look at you. You caught your very first desert hare already. Gosh, I wonder if our desert hares are going to struggle, especially if their eagle family gets as big as it was before. I kind of hope that it ends up going over here to build its nest instead. Nope, it's making a brand new one. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going to become of the other nest. Do you think maybe Mother Eagle will still incubate the eggs? I mean, she's flying all over the place over here. Surely she's noticed that we have some eggs in need of hatching. 
Maybe we can revisit that in the next episode, when she's had some more time to settle in. But if we actually completed the Desert Eagle task, that means we can finally get started on the Meerkats too. So let's go ahead and accept our reward. The Desert Rock, which I believe is all that we needed to unlock the Desert Grass. That also unlocked the Hole in One task. Oh, and of course, this one is about the Meerkats. Meerkats are burrowing animals and create a network of tunnels in their territory. Add some meerkats to the world in a suitable habitat and watch them dig. Alright, so I guess that's going to be next on our list. Speaking of the desert here, it looks like our cloudy little camels are doing pretty good. Still spinning at each other all day long, of course. But poor Siri? It seems like she's having trouble all on her own. Oh, not a single camel? to keep her company. Oh, thank goodness. She does have a family after all. Greta the camel. You two are going to have to cook up some way to get on top again. But if we could go ahead and place some of those desert rocks down, I think we should be able to unlock the meerkats in the next episode. There they are. These big, giant, spiky rocks. They definitely fit the scenery better than the other rocks we have here. Now, was it just the yucca plant that would give us the desert grass? No, looks like it was something else. One of the other cacti, maybe? Let's see if we can find it. The desert grass comes from the barley. Alright, so can we actually grow barley over here? It likes forests and woodlands, so I would imagine probably not. I guess we could place it over here, though, because this is our forest. Right where all of our golden carrots are hiding. None of the bunnies have gotten brave enough to steal a taste yet, but I guess that oasis is going to be more helpful than we realized. So in the next episode, we'll see if we can unlock the desert grass, and then I guess we'll see if we can unlock the meerkats too. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!